Okay, I'm here with my buddy Oliver. This is Oliver, isn't he a handsome fella? He kind of looks like a Dalmatian. In this video, I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that's a resource gardener. Now, Oliver is normal, a dog can guard a person, place, or a thing. Uh, I've worked with one dog, it guarded the air around them. That was very hard to figure out. Now, when a dog is guarding, they're worried oh. they're gonna take their stuff. The worst thing you do if a dog is a resource guard is actually take their stuff away because you're validating everything that they want. So when we have a dog that has a resource guard problem, what we want to do is we want to change their emotional response as from a worry that somebody's going to take something into recognizing that when the per this thing people get close to this thing, I'm not going to lose it. Matter of fact, my situation is going to improve. Um, all right, so uh, he's not actually doing it now, but I'm gonna pantomime as if he was. Now, when I'm doing this because of the orientation of the room, you're probably not gonna see my head as I walk over there. That's okay, you should be able to hear what I'm saying. So we're gonna invite Oliver, come here, buddy. Oliver. I know, but you gotta get up here so everybody can see how handsome you are. Come on. He works in Hollywood, he needs a motivation. There we go. There we go. It's over here, buddy. Um, okay, so we're gonna see if we'll, he'll sit there. You, if you wanna grab a handful of those treats, his handler, his primary guardian is right here. And she's got some treats that she's gonna give to him. Now, I could be delivering the treats, but in this sort of situation, I find it's better for the handler to do so. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk out of this, uh, again, you probably won't see my head. So normally, Oliver guards if people just walk by this doorway or if they come into the room. So let's say that I'm coming into the room and Oliver, Oliver, and he growls when I get this distance. Now I know this is not your situation, it's the door, but just for illustration purposes. So I would take note, I'm about eight feet away from Oliver. He's indicated to me that he's uncomfortable. So I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna walk away, I'm gonna leave the room so that he can kind of relax. Once he's relaxed, and let's say, we're gonna use this, hopefully you can see this on the floor. This is my mark of where he growled before. His growl is not aggression. His growl is saying a warning. I don't feel comfortable with you at that distance. So that's the distance he growled. So I leave the room and I'm gonna come back in and he would be looking at me, Oliver, Oliver. And then the guardian's gonna say yes and give him a treat. I'm gonna turn around and exit. Now in the perfect world, I'd like to approach from this angle, then this angle, then this angle, but the way that the room is set up, we can only have the door. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna stop one or two paces behind the place where he indicated for the first time. I would either throw a treat or you give him a treat. Then I turn and walk away, go out of view, and come back and repeat it. So I'm just going to continue coming back to this spot that's about two feet away. And so what I'm saying is when I come in, I'm not moving far enough into the room for you to feel that you need to warn me. And we're going to provide a positive. So the positive is coming at a time where he's not warning. Then eventually I go this closer and then I exit the room and eventually I'm walking here and eventually I'm going to be able to walk up all the way and I'll probably be able to give him a treat provided you feel safe. Now when a dog is guarding something it will bite anyone including you if it's your dog and so uh, I've got a lot of people like oh he'd never bite me and then they do. It's a primal instinct that they go through because when they're wild they need to protect the resources. That's food, that's their fuel, they need that to survive. We've domesticated them now. They don't need to do this, but they, there's just kind of a carryover. So never punish or correct or get mad at a dog for resource guarding. What you want to do is recreate a situation like this where we can basically help him practice a portion of it, the portion being small enough where he doesn't react, and then he, something good happens, and gradually we get closer and closer. And eventually you come in the room, give him a treat, and walk out of the room, and he now looks at the arrival of a person as a positive as opposed to something I need to be protective of or bite about. Um, and now again, when you're doing this, any growling is his way of saying it's too much. If you're doing this properly throughout the practice, it should look like there's no growling and the dog's completely fine. If you, if you get stiff or tense or growls, we're getting greedy, we're asking for too much. Now this is, um, I talk a lot about the roller coaster. I don't like riding roller coasters. Um, but if I ride a roller coaster, I probably burn like 200 calories in five minutes or a minute or how long the roller coaster is because of how intense the experience is. If you're doing this right, it should look pretty calm, but it is pretty intense for the dog. So I usually recommend doing this in like a one minute, one minute practice session, then give them like two to four minutes of a break and then another minute practice session. So maybe you just do it a couple times throughout the day instead of repping, repping, repping. A lot of people go too much. And if we rep too long, he's gonna get agitated and his growl maybe would normally come here, 
but now it's going to come way over there because he's overly agitated and overly stimulated. So it's better to be conservative, go slowly, and have good progress. We want to stack one good practice experience with no growling on another one with no growling and another one. And after a while, the dog's brain, way their brains are worked, I just forget to do it. It's just not something I do anymore. And after a while, then people can walk in the room. Uh, so, and, and the other thing is it's not intentional for the dog. A lot of my clients, they think he's being a jerk. It's hysteric, hysteria. He's not thinking about it at all. So it's just a natural response. So no punishment, no correction, no getting mad. When it happens, people get frustrated. What's happening again? Sweet, it happens again. We're going to get another opportunity to make it better. Now, the problem is if it happens and you're sitting there and your treats are over there or downstairs, you got to recreate so much stuff. So in this room, we don't really have one, but maybe I'm sure there's a cabinet or somewhere we can do it. Or just come oh. here and you have your treat pouch. But like, I'm guessing sometimes you're in here and he doesn't resource guards. Yeah. And so you, you just never know. So it just, I would just have a, maybe a little ramekin or something. Every time you come in, you have a handful of treats so you can rep this five or ten times each time it happens. The more you rep it, the easier to get. Oliver. Hey, buddy. Well, this is my buddy Oliver sitting. This part where you sit, yes. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to resource uh, a room in your home.